of Dora. Welcome to Torah Talk, a Torah Institute podcast. Torah just means instruction in Hebrew. At Torah Talk, we will make straight the ways of Yahuwah and discuss the simple truths of Scripture so that even you can understand and get all the juicy life hidden within the pages of Yahuwah's Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. <laughs> Huh? Hey, brother. Hey, I see both of us. Hey, my man, how's it going? All right, how, how's it look? Yeah, it's looking good. Green, green and green. Oh, yeah. Now, how's the microphone sound? Does my uh, voice quality sound better? I think it sounds great. Yeah. Good. We're using a, one of Adam's Audio Technica microphones. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Do you want to come in? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, sister. How are you going? Just fine. How are you? All right. Very good. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> I can't see yourself. Well, let me just turn that off. Yeah. Now I don't see myself anymore, but that's okay. I don't need to see me. Am I in the am I in the picture okay? Yeah, you're great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Just get... Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, leave that light on, darling. Yeah, sorry. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, here we no, go. I, the, the last week, uh, the uh the video that you did was just marvelous. Oh, I had a bit of fun with that. <laughs> you did. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I just get so carried away. Like, I get so um, nervous on the spot that I don't even introduce the show and I don't do anything and I, I just get caught up in our conversation. And then when I go to edit it, I go, whoops. <laughs> whoops. Well, go ahead. Introduce the show. Uh, brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Tour Talk. I'm Mark Davidson, and I'm joined by Skype with our brother Lou White. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> hey. How's, how's it going, brother? You look well. It's, it's great to be here. Yeah. Uh, well, I just woke up about an hour or so ago, had breakfast yeah. with the lovely Mrs. White, and, you know, we uh, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning here. Yeah. And uh, at what time is it there? It's 10 o'clock in the evening. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. And you have the same shirt on as you did last week. No, it's a different shirt. Ah. And, uh, has no more. But I am wearing the same shirt. You see the uh, menorah, the golden menorah, and, of course, the name of Yahuwah yeah. written above it. So it has been washed. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I'm glad you noticed. Yeah, it's very fresh. Very it's, fresh. It yeah. looks very white. It looks lovely. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I didn't know what... Or, you know, I hardly ever do. Uh, yeah. A brother sent me a wonderful sh shirt in the mail. Yeah. Uh, his name was uh, John. I don't yeah. want to mention his name. It's yeah. privacy. But yeah. it says in English letter or Latin letters in English, mm. uh, Yahuwah in the front, mm. just big yeah. in English. And then on the back, it says, look up the word B-A-A-L. Yeah. It means Lord, you know. And wow. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. A really fantastic shirt. <laughs> I, I hope to wear it this coming yeah. weekend. Yeah. For the seminar, you know. Oh, on our the brother Paul. Oh, that's this week. Wonderful. You who are willing? Yeah, it's going to be the first day of the week. Yeah. Uh, several days away. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yes, it will. I'm yeah. still I'm still waiting to see the uh, the heartbeat one. I got that the other day. Looks great. Oh, you haven't seen that yet? Okay. No, I just looked at the menu and I pushed play while I was tinkering with other things just to see what uh, I might have to do. I don't have to do sure. anything. Adam's on board. Oh, it looks fabulous. Well, great. Adam, yeah. I'd love to hear that. You're, you're in touch with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, Wonderful. 
Yeah, so I don't have to do anything. It's wonderful. I'm just but, yeah, but you you like to put in little snippets and uh, <laughs> introductions and yeah. and you have uh, what do you do? Uh, put in commercials. Yeah, commercials. Yeah, commercials. Little they kind of break up the, the intensity of it all because I'm standing up there and I'm scaring everybody and you know it's good yeah. to have a little break, a little yeah. comedy. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, I wanted to say a cheerio out to. Uh, James and Sintara, because they're a young couple who have just been immersed and married in uh, into Yahusha, and uh, they now live in Perth in Western Australia. And I heard via the grapevine that they are just finding these Torah talks and the things we throw on YouTube so encouraging. Um, and, you know, because young people come in and, they, you know, they don't always have a lot of time or, uh, you know, they're not reading a lot, you know, and so when we put things up like this, it's sort of, it's really, they're finding it really good food, so, how are you guys? So, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, so I just want to say hello to them. That's wonderful, yeah, there's a lot of people that don't have time to really put things together after, mm. you know, after decades and decades of study yeah. on a particular topic or related topics, mm. so yeah. it's important, you yeah. know. Well, I've been uh, freaking out all day <laughs> because of some of the questions I wanted to ask you. Um, did you get my email? Yes, I did, and yeah. uh, I I can understand why. It's a sensitive subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've been uh, just tossing them over in my head, and just because we get lots of questions, you know, and right. just because of the society we live in, and um, we're just constantly surrounded by you know, Hellenism and sensuality and sex and, you know, it's coming at us all the time and, uh, yeah, men and women and young people are coming out of that system and they're becoming Nazarene, but they, they bring a lot of it with them into their marriage or into their walk with Yahusha and they often don't know it and they may not have read the scriptures from cover to cover so they don't know all the little intricate things that you have picked up over the last 30 odd years. So I was wondering if I could pick your brain about a few. Uh, you certainly may, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with information on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, where do I want to start? I wanted to start with, um, well, first of all, before we go to that, last week when you were talking about the the head coverings, the women, the woman's head covering uh, and the husband being in Yahusha, um, we found that really amazing, um, and it's been an answer to sort of a lot of our problems a few of us have been discussing it this week where we're not sure why we can't break through um, with our spouses or with each other, and it's because um, the men as well, but the women aren't realising that, and it's not a heavy you have to obey me thing. It's like a, if you come into this loving relationship and realise your true value and flowing with Yahusha because in and and sort of I don't know if I'm explaining it the right way. It's it's like the husband has to call the shots though, doesn't he? But the wife the wife is, is flowing and if she's not flowing, she doesn't have the she doesn't have her is that what you mean when you say head covering? I'm doing a lot of the talking here. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah the head covering is uh it is a like I say uh, in, in many cases the Hebrew understanding is a, yeah. there's a physical level that yeah. you can touch that's tangible, but then that figurative level yeah. is uh, the most important part, and it's mm. actually the, you know the thing that it points to, yeah. and the thing that uh, we have to remember is that Yahusha is our head, our head covering mm. as men, and thereby also covers the woman through us. I see. So. There, it isn't that he's not a covering for the woman. Mm. He is. It's yeah. just that uh, it's almost like he is the kupa, which is the, the household or the tent. Yeah. And when a Hebrew couple gets married, yeah. they get yeah. underneath this covering. And the covering, of course, represents Shamayim, mm. uh, the household of Yahuwah. And we're, we're entering into uh, the, the, our relationship together as a marriage of bonding to become one with Yahuwah, but also we're united under Yahuwah together. Mm -hmm. And that's the real thing that all the head coverings and, and, and talith and all that points to. Mm -hmm. And if we get wrapped up in the, and, and we just hit the ceiling with 
just covering our heads, and we don't really hmm. yeah, hmm. what it points to. Hmm. Then it doesn't really matter. You know, it's like a person that's born and is circumcised but doesn't follow the Torah. Yeah. If they're circumcised, their circumcision means nothing at all. Yeah. See, so it's kind of like hmm. that. So when you uh, when you say that the woman recognizes that she has an authority over her, like the men have an authority over them, in Yahusha, do you mean that? Um, what do you mean by? How, how do you say that? Like, like if you were to say, a woman has an authority, must recognize that she has an authority over her, and that's her head covering. Um, does that mean that? Because I mean, we know that the the wife can hear from Yahusha just as well as the husband can. And so if they're talking amongst themselves, does that mean that the husband then, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, it was getting along very nicely, actually. Yeah. The, uh, you can extend all this to other areas, like authority yeah. is, is really what it's about. And mm -hmm. the idea of authority doesn't mean severity. Yeah. It just simply means that there's there's a back and forth like Yahuwah says let us reason together okay. and not so he can learn something but so that we can mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you remember the Sanhedrin when uh, when Paul or Yahushua went to stand before them yeah. they they recognized the authority of the position yeah. like we would go before a, a king or a president and we would acknowledge and respect their authority, yeah. uh, not necessarily the person, because the person could be, you know, an undesirable person, which, is, you know, Daniel 4, Daniel 4 says that we are ruled over, in all cases, by the lowest of men, yeah. but the office of the position has to be respected, yeah. so, and uh, acknowledged, mm. not to be flippantly dismissed, but, you know, when they would go before the Sanhedrin, that... Uh, that authority was recognized, and the government, uh, state, the state that's put over us as well. We're even though our country that we live in today in the United States, we're seeing national national disasters of all sorts because of our leadership, and we're all suffering together. As a, it's a curse. Yeah. However, most people don't acknowledge that; they don't recognize it, but many do. Uh, in fact, well, not many, not to imply most, but a, a very few do. Uh, I think the people like yourself in other countries can see what's happening to this country in just the natural disasters. Yeah. And you have to wonder, what is it that we've done? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we're, we're all suffering together with it, yeah. uh, financially and uh, a lot of death and mayhem. But uh, the authority, though, of uh, the Sanhedrin, for example, was respected. Yeah. And when Yahushua went before Pilate, he even discussed that authority level and who was over him, you know, who was over mm -hmm. Pilate. Yeah. His, his authority comes from far above. Yeah. In fact, standing before Pilate was the very being that gave Pilate and Caesar their authority. Yeah. And he was there on, seemingly on the bottom receiving yeah. the punishments. Uh, uh, so yeah. we have a lot of imitating to do, you know, and yeah. Yeah. not rail against our authorities. Yeah. So there are, uh, you know, human authorities that we have to acknowledge. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but now, in, in relationship to husbands and wives, mm -hmm. when we get underneath that kupa or the shamayim, the head covering, the household of Yahuwah is what yeah. we're under we're under the kupa, yeah. and to raise uh, to have a, a union of two into one, mm -hmm. Yahusha, you know, called it. Uh, they are no longer two, but one, mm -hmm. and they're under him, his authority, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's it's not really so much the physical that matters, mm -hmm. but uh, it's okay if a woman wants to cover her head in the assembly. Yeah. Uh, that's not a problem. But if the man gives her permission to not mm -hmm. do so, that mm -hmm. is not him dismissing Yahushua's mm -hmm. authority. Yeah. It's just simply explaining to her because she already understands yeah you know and See, you know, when they would get together they would also yeah. gossip a lot too and that yeah. disrespect that they would give their one another's husbands was very yeah. bad so even in you just saying if he gives her permission uh, a lot of girls coming out of the world would be very offended by that because of the worldly mindset wouldn't they because it's the girl's job to get the men in order you know that's the, what the world uh, teaches isn't it 
And uh, well, you know, the conditioning that they're they've been forced to undertake. Yeah. Not that we don't need getting into order, but I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah, that we do. Oh really, my. <laughs> it's um. Yes. Yeah. So with the um. We speak to people and, you know, we have people emailing us and talking to us and they're young people and, you know, we hear stories of people that are, there's just so much pressure out there for the young people. They're all, they're all trying to, you know, look good and it's all about sex and lust and appearances and, you know, they're all wanting to go off dancing and go off to the islands and, you know, everything like that and um, steroids and things like that and so... When a husband and wife come together, do you think uh, there should be, you know, oral, oral sex or things like that involved? Did you think that that's in Torah? Does Torah address things like oral sex or masturbation or things like that? Do they address it? Is it is it uh, inferred anywhere, or is it really up to the individual to decide? Or um, because a lot of young people just need us to say, well, yeah, you should or you shouldn't, you know. Um, because they don't have the head knowledge or what you know about about Torah. You know? Well, yeah, uh, you know, Paul, our beloved brother Paul, yeah. has great insights into marriage and sexuality and so mm -hmm. forth, even though we don't know if he was married ever, yeah. necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so he was talking about taking along a wife. He said, I have every right to do so, but he didn't mention a wife mm. of his own. Mm. But uh, here, and here he is giving advice about sexuality and marriage to people, and he himself isn't married, but he's got wisdom that, or had wisdom that we really need to draw from. Mm. And uh, I think it's First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, and he goes into great detail about how we're called by Yahuwah to be set apart. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. set apartness is his will for us. Mm -hmm. Now, if we use the conditioning of the world, and we say, well, we're immersed in this in school and in our society, everywhere we're being blasted by this um, loose sexuality and yeah. people are talking about it without any shame. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we have... Uh, an excuse and a rationalization in our heads, but you know that doesn't make any difference. We're uh, we can be among them, but we have to uh, not engage in their thought patterns because Yahusha himself, when he was here on earth and when he's in us, would not lead us to to be talking that way or acting that way. He would uh, be a he would certainly be among them in order to help them. Yeah. That, that's like the job that I have in the second mm -hmm. world. I'm yeah. there to help those that are in most need, mm -hmm. uh, and I can be among them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like a, it, it's a war. See, there's a war going on, whether people want to acknowledge it or not. They don't see it, mm -hmm. but the spiritual war that's going on around us is raging. Mm -hmm. The war in heaven, like we talked about several times, yeah. that's going to end with uh, the millennial rest when it comes, when Yahushua yeah. returns. The, the, demo the demonic elements are going to be bound. Yeah. And that's the war is going to be, in the, the, he'll, he'll put them in jail yeah. and arrest them. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, he's going to judge them all. Yeah. And then the war will be over because yeah. he will conquer completely. Yeah. But you see, right now, we've got all these examples from Scripture that go all the way back to the book of Bereshit. That's Genesis for the people who don't know. Um, you know, where... Uh, illustrations are given, like when Yehuda was, um, I think uh, one of his uh, daughter-in-laws named Tamar was, uh, you know, needing a new husband because the first husband was evil. Mm -hmm. I think it was Yehuda's actual firstborn son. But, uh, you know, when, when Yehuda um, appointed Onan to be her new husband, and he didn't raise up a brother, I mean a son for his brother, so uh, he would spill his seed, okay. which is what we would think of when masturbation occurs. Okay. And of course, it was evil in Yahuwah's eyes, and he slew Onan for that. Okay. So you see, this is something that we we want to uh, see sexual sins are very serious, and Yahuwah uses those as illustrations of the way it makes him feel when when Israel 
and the two houses are in rebellion. Yeah. I think it's Ezekiel chapter 23 mm -hmm. that talks about mm -hmm. there was one mother, that's Israel, who had two daughters, and the two daughters were whoring, you know, yes. with the nations. And of yeah. course, this is the thing we're seeing today. We're living among the nations, scattered, and we're still around these heathen ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what you who is distressed about. So these these questions that you're asking are very important. Yeah, you know, you need to be set apart. It, it, it's first First Thessalonians chapter four that says that Yahuwah's will for us is our set apartness. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of these things that we're conditioned with, all these uh, innuendos that we hear and, and and visualizations and pornography, it's all wrong because yeah. in Matthew chapter five. Yahushua said, even somebody who even looks at a woman with lust yeah. has adultery with her, a violation of the seventh commandment. Mm. Um, wow. You know, we have to be mindful of that. Mm. And the only way to get that way is to have his mind steering our ship. Mm. In other words, we have to get out of his way, mm. and he's got to be operating us yeah. completely. Yeah. And people don't want to surrender that way. Mm. You know, they have their fun, you know. Mm. Yeah. They want rationalizations too, yeah. and but you know I'm I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm just saying no, that it's, no. it's a yeah. it's a process that you've yeah. got to go through, yeah. and nobody ever reaches perfection while they're in their flesh. Yeah. It's complete. It's a constant struggle. Yeah. But I'm I'm nine years away from seventy years old, and it's still a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with Yahushua inside you, um, yes. and I can say as a young believer, with Yahushua inside you. Um, you you do you feel the flogging you know and it's true even if you even if you just look you know it's it's uh, you feel that flogging um, and so people uh, young believers can know that Yahushua's in them and he will take them through that process um, so today I just wanted to help <laughs> so well, don't, you know the con don't, your yeah. conscience you, you know tells you yeah inside you your mm -hmm. conscience will tell you that yeah. you're in uh, violation. Yeah. You know, yeah. The shame. You know, yeah. if, if it's something that you want to, if it's a specific thing that you want to know whether or not it's it's bound or loose, mm. you know, that means, you know, forbidden or permitted, yeah. it would be important to think, well, what would Yahushua say about it? You know, and yeah. what would he do? Yeah. And then just do what he would do. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, yeah, that's really good way to think about it. Yeah. What would Yahushua yeah. do? Because we, I mean, I wasn't taught much about you know sex or things like that when I was a kid, and when I came into religion, um, the people that were teaching me at the time they always taught me that uh, things like uh, oral sex that's just perverse and it's evil. Um, would you agree with that? Well, to get specific on mm -hmm. things like that, uh, you know, we, uh, I would assume that Yahusha created us to operate in a certain way. Yeah. There's there's certain things that we do that we think are fantastic and mm -hmm. yet the mm -hmm. physiological aspects of the mechanics of mm -hmm. our bodies, the design and the engineering that went into it and the planning, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not the uh, actual proper use. Yeah. And we have uh, ways of abusing or misusing yes. uh, many things. Yeah. And we do it with the plant life. Uh, we do it. We improperly plant things. We yeah. mess with their genetics. Yeah. We have uh, things that we do that we shouldn't do, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the proper use. It's yeah. just like uh, Romans chapter one. You know, if you read that, it says that things that are that people do to themselves, uh, they receive the penalty, the due penalty for that. Yeah. Uh, in themselves yeah. because of the fact that they're doing things that are not proper. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, there's no way that you can say that, uh, that you know, justify, over, you know, let's say, say oral sex yeah. because that doesn't make any sense. Because there is, you know, it's maybe there are created things that use their mouth cavity yeah. for propagation, like yeah. frogs, you know. I see. But, yeah. That's not part of our our our, no. our species does not use. No. Uh, it's it's kind of a conflict of terms. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 It, it's not a, it's not proper use. No. So uh, and it's really a sin against your own body. 
Yeah. It's not so much, uh, that you're sitting outside your body. All other sin is outside the body. Mm. You know, like Paul explains. Yeah. You know, but uh, a person who sins sexually, mm. like with a with a prostitute or any other misuse, is actually sinning against their own body. Yeah. 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 So, so with um, going back to when you're talking about spilling your seed, obviously that's dealing with masturbation, but. Um, would that be uh, dealing also with contraception, like if you like condoms or things like that, or stopping? Uh, uh, some people have said, you know, and I can talk from experience having five children, you start saying, okay, well, maybe we should think about stopping now. Um, and so my wife's read lots of things, and they say, some people say it's, you know, uh, so contraception is the same as um, abortion in a way because you're stopping something from, do you know what I mean? What would you say? Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's actually mentioned in Genesis 38. Yeah. Onan was using a form of contraception. Yeah. Okay, you know, okay. I see. He was, having, yeah. he was having relations with his wife, mm. but he was not allowing her to become impregnated. Yeah. So, you know, who's in charge? You know, we have yeah. to remember that we're not. See, we're trying to steer the ship, and we have to go with the flow, even if it might not be pleasant for us. Because he didn't yeah. say it would be fun. He just yeah. said, trust me, you know, yeah. and uh, be strong <laughs> and courageous. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you happen to have uh, 14 children, mm. those are all arrows in your, in your quiver. Yeah. And uh, he will make sure that you're taken care of, and they are too. <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to plan everything out. Of course, the globalists today would like to eliminate a lot of people. And they're always encouraging people that are pregnant yeah. to get a test to see if the baby happens to have 47 gene, uh, 47 chromosomes yeah. in 46. And that way they convince them that they need to abort. Mm. And, of course, sometimes they have bad tests. You know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, good to know. And clearly, uh, you know, clearly, oh, abortion is wrong, isn't it? Yeah, you shouldn't go there. Cause oh, yeah. well, murder, the example yeah. given in Scripture is you know, when two men are fighting mm -hmm. and a woman who's pregnant nearby happens to get entangled in one of the blows mm -hmm. and there's injury of any kind done to yeah. the child or her, but most of the child is, is talked about. Mm. That that womb is a very special place, and if yeah. you mess with that, then you're going to have to pay for the damages. Mm. And of course, it's life for life. Yeah, it's yeah. eye for eye, injury yeah. for it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and that has to do not so much with you who is justice uniformly, yeah. but with the child, with the unborn child. Uh, That's what it's about. Yeah. People miss that all the time. Yeah. but it's about the unborn right. child and, and the safety of that womb. And that people need to be paying attention to what's around them. Yeah. Um, wow. I can't concentrate now. I'm still back on the 14 children. <laughs> oh. <Sorry. laughs> but so you, th you think you should just let th let things be as they're going to be and trust you? Is that is that the way to do it? Oh yes. That's yeah. Exactly. Don't go yes. tam don't go tampering with any of the reproductive systems. Mm. Yes, and uh, when. Almost everything that we do, well, everything yeah. that we do, not almost everything we do, yeah. if you acknowledge Yahuwah in everything that you do, yeah. and He will direct your paths, and yeah. He will take care of you. Yeah. How did you get away with only two, then? <laughs> what do you mean? You mean that's a good thing? Oh, my three grandchildren come from my place. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so I've got uh, my five, you yeah. know, in that yeah. thing. That's true. You have, that's uh, true. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I get what you mean. Wonderful. So you got two yeah. sons and I've got three grandchildren. So. Yeah, yeah. I do have five. Mm, yeah. So you thought you were of me. There's a scripture that says somewhere, isn't there, that you should um, build up, so, uh, prepare for your grandchildren, isn't there? So, oh, yes, yes. Mm. Well, you know, the thing that, well, the children of Israel are, you know, that's who we are if mm. we're in the covenant. And, uh, you know, if, uh, there's really not so much a word that I know of for mm -hmm. grandchild. You know, they're just children. You know, they they're descendants. You know, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. if they're descendants, then they're your children. You know, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, well, we covered most of the sexual things I wanted to talk about. A husband and wife should just come together, and it's a beautiful thing, and you shouldn't go talking to people about it, should you? It's, it's a private... Is there a scripture somewhere I think that says you should you shouldn't um, it should be kept between the two of you, isn't it? Is there somewhere that? What do you mean that? discussing it or what? You shouldn't go out talking about your sex life with people. It's not it's not what you do. You should. Well, that's uh, private between a man and a woman. That's yeah, right. That's right. Do. Yeah. Uh, Unless you have need of counseling and you want yeah. to share it privately with a person who has experience, yeah. Uh, I'd get somebody that has spiritual training rather than not so much. I mean, Torah is the thing that everybody needs to go to, yeah. but Torah is loaded with uh, sexuality, mm. and his and Yehua has shown us how we make him feel, yeah. And the uncleanness and the defilements that we see in the world and our conscience mm. exposes to us. Uh, are the things that Yahuwah speaks out boldly about, mm. you know, cleanness and yeah. how, how we make him feel mm. or how people make him feel. I hope we aren't, but uh, we, we certainly are capable of it, have been, have been in the past yeah. guilty, you know, we yeah. have done. Mm. So a lot of people, um, when you look, look on the internet or other things like that, there's, they, they have a go at the scripture, they have a go at, at the creator and they say, oh, well, if uh, if there was Adam and Kua or even and, and they had children, wouldn't they have had to sleep with their brother or sister? And they go on with things like that, and they try and talk about incest and things in a, in the scripture. But um, and that is true, isn't it? They would have had to. It is the way it was. Yes, at one time. In fact, when he said, "Be fruitful and multiply," the sisters and it says that Adam and Kua had had many other. Yeah. daughters and sons or other yeah. children and they had to remarry marry each one another yeah. and uh, at, at some point though the genetic uh, interaction was degrading itself after the fall of course and yeah. they became corrupted and, and, and they had to look for people who were more distant relatives because if, when you breed together too closely in your family you will amplify uh, genetic disorders. Okay. Because, um, you know, genetics is a matter in, in, in a simple oversimplification, really. Uh, it, the certain genes in the, there's millions of genes in a, in a genome, and every cell has them. And you have traits in the, in the, uh, in the information. Yeah. And some of them are switched on and other ones are switched off. And if you've got, bad traits that are switched on and then you co you, you uh, mate with someone who has that same genetic problem mm -hmm. and it's switched on mm -hmm. then it amplifies you know and it makes it fixed mm -hmm. you know yeah. and that's uh, you know so at some point you have said no no further than uh, what is it third cousin I think you know yeah that you yeah. marry yeah well that's good yeah fantastic Wonderful. That's all off my chest. <laughs> it, it really isn't so bad, you know. No, no, no. So. The, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, the last few times we've talked, you've mentioned uh, the shop and how you talk to people and being in, in, in a trade ourselves, and I've got a few friends up north who are in salons as well, they're hairdressers, and you talk to people or you don't talk to people sometimes. Um, we, uh, we, I think we're all of us who've been talking. We feel very upset because we look at how confident you are, and we know you've had lots of experience in it. But we think you, you seem fearless, and we think because I know myself, I look at some clients and I go, oh, "I'm not even going to. You're not. You're not interested. <laughs> what am I going to tell you? You'll bite my head off. You know. It's, and um, it's scary because you're afraid they will bite yeah. your head off. You know, but Yahushua will lead you to say exactly the thing, and you don't want to say too much because when you have a lot of light in you, mm -hmm. you can blind them. And I, I'll give you a little example. I, I have lots of them, but just every day there's something that happens. There were three ladies that came into the shop, and the first, the first lady that walked in was an older lady, maybe in her fifties, and the other two were in their early twenties. Mm -hmm. And 
the first lady said, do you have tarot cards? Yeah. Now, this was just two days ago. Yeah. I mean, this happens all the time. Yeah. But this lady said, do you have tarot cards? And there were three of the girls. Yeah. And I said, no, but we're planning on having some Torah cards later on. Yeah. And they said, what, what is a Torah card? And I said, well, that's where you have a card, and there's four commandments on one side and six on the other side. Yeah. And they said, well, we don't want any commandments. <laughs> and I said, oh, I see. Well, what is it that you want to do with your tarot cards? That uh, involves divination, which is the same as witchcraft. Yeah. And they said, exactly, it's divination. You know, they, they knew what it was, this old lady, this older lady. Yeah. And uh, the one younger girl came over to me, and she said, is there a problem with tarot cards? And I said, well, it's a violation of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Yeah. And she said, Deuteronomy 18. That's when the other one came over, the older one. Yeah. And she said, you're giving me a lot of trouble here. <laughs> and apparently, she was training these two girls, you know, a mentor yeah. you know, in witchcraft. Wow. And so sorcery you know mm. so we have uh, that going on and I and I mentioned Deuteronomy 18 mm. three different times to mm. this girl this younger one mm. and she's a, probably looked it up mm. and read Deuteronomy 18 and, and I said if you if you do this you're making yourself an enemy of the Creator you don't want him as your enemy because mm. he'll come after you wow. and so she she got kind of worrisome and mm. When they left, which was just a moment later, the one lady, the younger lady that I, that I saw some concern in, after the other two had gone out the door, she was going out and she opened the door back up and she said, pray for me, and left. And I'm thinking, man, this girl's heart is, has got something, you know. She's wonderful. That, that sort of thing happens all the time. Yeah. And I and I just flippantly and boldly just say, well, that's divination. I name it what it is. Yeah. And then I give them the scripture. And I say, well, look this scripture up and right. see what you think. Because yeah. they're not cracking their scriptures open. You know, they're not reading that. Because, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. what happens, uh, you know, but you need to have, you have to be equipped yourself in order to train other people. You have to have it sown in your heart. Yeah. And so the things that come out of you will be pertinent and applied to the situation. Yeah. So there's a variety of situations mm -hmm. that can arise. But, uh, so you would trust Yahusha for your business. You wouldn't be worried that somebody would be offended by what you've said and not come back. You would you would be trusting Yahusha for your business. So oh, I say a kind way. I don't yeah. argue, argue with anybody. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. the same way Yahusha was. I don't make them feel judged. Yeah. Say, well, you know, as a third party, the creator has this to say about that, you yeah. know. And, of course, the, the third party happens to be in residence inside me. Yeah. So it's, like, easy for me to know what his mind is. Yeah. So he just tells me what to tell him, you know. Mm. Because he's, you know, you, it's just like Daoud or David. Yeah. He, he said, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. And I share that word that's sown in there. And that, that's the seed that goes out and gets planted in other hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm where I'm at. That's why we're all where we're at. Yeah. You know, we could be working in a, in a very clean, sterile bank or uh, insurance firm or, or whatever. The same people are there. They're lost. They're going into yeah. the lake of fire. Yeah. You know, and they look all cleaned up on the outside, but inside they're dead. You know, they're dead bones. Yeah. They're rotting and uh, decaying. Yeah. They're defiled. And, uh, mm -hmm. and and the world is the problem, you know. Yeah. It can look very clean and nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sad thing is <laughs> they're being inoculated in those steeples that they go to to stay away from that tour. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, it's so yeah. odd. Yeah. So yes, yeah, they're, they're messengers of light, are masquerading as messengers of light. Yeah, that's what they're doing. So, so you um, when you first came into this walk, um, did were you this confident as well in your, or did you have fear? You know, oh, I was. I was at first. I was very frightened, and I and I thought that the demons knew mm -hmm. about what I knew, and they already knew what I knew. But I, they, I thought that I would be attacked. 
yeah. because of you know, and there was a lot of spiritual upheaval uh, and I and I try to keep everything under not my control but under Yahusha's control so that his uh, he reminds me of who to pray for um, you know I don't know what I'm praying uh, necessarily for them for but I just pray for names that he brings into my head and I pray for that person and quite often it's kind of uncanny but uh, you know, sometimes they're uh, protected from things, you know, as a result of that. But it's all, you know, it's really just that, you know, not not that we're doing something, but Yahuwah is doing things and letting us know. And see, prayer can be just silence before him. Mm. Have you ever considered that? I mean, that is mm. the best. Mm. That is the best. That's like uh, one of the things that was written in the Gospel of Thomas. Yeah. Thomas is in the scriptures canon, but... Mm. In the Nag Hammadi codices, which are like a student's notes, one of the things that Thomas wrote down was something, I'm paraphrasing, uh, Yahusha asked Thomas something, and Thomas replied, he said, uh, Master, it would be better for me to be silent and for you to speak. And that's what we do when we pray in silence. And we don't say anything, but we just listen. And that is the best. <laughs> That's when it really flows. Wow. You ought to try it. You know. That's amazing. It is. Uh, yes. clear, clear your mind and just be still. Yes, be still before him and silent. Mm. Yes. People should mm. try that. You know, <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. You know, five minutes is all. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Whatever happened to that seminar on prayer? Have you got that yet? Well, you know what? I don't uh, recall what happened. I will look into it. If, if thanks for reminding me. Keep reminding me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there was a recording, and I, and I understand that it was. Uh, it turned out I have the notes, yeah. so we might have to do one of those reconstruction jobs. Yeah. I think the film of uh, me actually standing there was uh, was damaged or okay. medically erased or something. But I don't. Know. Yeah. Okay. Oh great! So we I'm going should... to make a note of that. <laughs> make a note. Prayer. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it down. Yeah. I just you know, upload the sequel to the gospel, yeah. which is, I mean the the secret the secret is what it's called. You already have it on YouTube. Yeah. But I just added it to our uh, you know our featured DVDs. Okay. I haven't been producing those, but uh, it's. Uh, it's pretty interesting. The secret. Uh, have you watched that one? Yes, yes. And you you went from the secret of the gospel, and then you went into uh, uh, the secret. Yeah, the other, yeah. It went from the everlasting gospel into the secret into the, the test. I think it went, wasn't it? Wow. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was a, an amazing uh, study, mm. and uh, the scattered tribes are rediscovering who they are here yeah. in the last day. Because yeah. Israel was sown into the nations long ago, and they're awakening. Not all of them, but the ones that he's called, the remnant, is being awakened from wherever they are on the, on the planet. And you're a perfect example, and so am I, of people who were ejected thousands of years ago, as long ago as 2,730 years ago or yeah. more. Yeah. And now here we are, these words of Yahuwah are coming upon us, and yeah. we're and we're obeying him. We've returned to his word and uh, entered into the covenant again. Yeah. And that's an overcoming situation. You have to overcome all that programming yeah. that we've been subjected to. Mm. With, um, I'll just come to me now, with your life, for instance, working full-time, long hours often, um, answering numerous amounts of emails, um, <laughs> I, I, I know Yahushua's with us and we relate all day, every day, and it's a, a thing. But as far as, and I know you have to have specific study time to prepare for seminars, but with the knowledge that you have, how do you find time to actually read the scripture for yourself? Not for any particular necessary, necessarily reason, um, but just for yours, because we know that that's his heart, his mind, that's his scripture. How do you get to that? Because I spent, you know, we, I work, I have, 
you know, the kids, yep. uh, you know, DVDs, putting them out, and, and it's all his plan, it's all great, but then you, you get to the end of the day and you go, oh, I haven't really, and then you might go a week and you go, yeah, still no scripture, you know, and you, how do you find, I guess I want to ask you your discipline, what sort of discipline do you have in your life? Well, I wish I could say I had more discipline, but yeah. actually the, 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 the heart that I have in me is so dedicated to what you're talking about that it's actually what I'm waiting all the time to get to. It's yeah. like all these other things that you described are just interruptions, including yeah. the, the long hours that I have to work in the secular world and, and, I, and, and the drive to work and the drive back. I'm, I'm constantly immersed in the, the thought of what, when I can get to it <laughs> and so that I can do the study. In fact, it'll be uh, sometimes a week after a seminar. I don't know what the next seminar is going to be, yeah. and I and they have to be a month apart because it, it, like you say, that's the reason that they're a month apart. Is there's so little time yeah. to get to get to where I have to get and prepare. But yeah. uh, what I often he wakes me up in the middle of the night, and I have a pad and a paper by my bed on on a table. Mm. And sometimes I just uh, wake up enough. Sometimes I don't even turn on the light. I just write in the dark, and I can't. I can't even uh, see what I'm writing. Yeah. But I'm thinking, and and I write down key words yeah. so that when I wake up the next day and I have that piece of paper, I can go there. It is, and he <laughs> wakes me up in the middle of the night. And sometimes I'll sit up and turn on the light and just fill a page, you know, full of. Uh, his ideas that he's he's just pouring them in, you know, and I I'm waking up from a sound sleep, mm. but that's uh, that's what happens, and and that's the my preparation for the stuff. He's he's doing it. I don't have to really worry about it. Do you, find, have, do you find that the things that he gives you to write are totally obscure, new, fresh things, or are they things that he's taught you over the years that you already know, but he's bringing your attention to? Or do you hear just obscure things that you have to go and look into? Well, both, actually, both. Because the, uh, like, uh, for example, the recent things that are going on among the Nazarene, mm. uh, all the vicious attacks, I hear about all kinds of leaders getting attacked. Yeah. And, of course, just I'm just one teacher, but I'm being attacked, too. And I, I never even saw this coming. Yeah. I, I thought, you know, for years and years and years, I was doing the same thing I'm doing now, yeah. and yet there was no attack yeah. necessary. It was just a there was a, an occasional person that would that would call up and go what you know. But uh, you know, it's like everybody's uh, gossiping, and yeah. and there's envy behind it. You can you can detect that. But mm -hmm. I'm not anybody special. I'm just mm -hmm. you know a teacher, yeah. and uh, anyway, the thing of it is. Uh, when these things uh, happen, like these heresies that we we don't want to mention, but uh, all these heresies that are happening, like there's the attack on yeah. the attack that we're getting on uh, our brother Paul. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you throw out what Paul wrote, you're going to yeah. have to throw what a lot of other people wrote too, because yeah. he's in cahoots with them, yeah. Peter, Luke, and and Timothy, and all these people. Um, you know, so I'm thinking uh, there's there's an attack that's going on because the adversary knows his time is short, mm. and that's why we're seeing all of these divisions among us and yeah. this lack of love. You know, yeah. and uh, just looking for a reason to make somebody look like they're evil when they're not. You know, and yeah. uh, I, I know there's a, several other leaders that have. Uh, fallen down, or, or leaders, not meaning you know, we have only one leader, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that uh, lead sheep that were Churches. out, that have become, mm -hmm. um, you know, fallen for these heresies. What do you mean, you fallen mean? for them? Well, like the, um, you know, the teachings that have been kind of fresh and new that are all error and heresies, uh, like attacking our beloved brother Paul, you know. I see. And, Calling him an anti-Messiah and yeah. saying things and, uh, yeah. about him, and 
and then people are dismissing his writings. And what's happened to a lot of these people is they're going back and they don't want to lose their, their faith in Yahuwah, but they'll lose their faith in Yahushua. And that's what he talked about. Uh, yeah. Paul himself wrote about mm -hmm. that. He said, these people fall away. And Peter wrote, wrote about it too. Yeah. Do you yeah. think? Do you think a lot of the people's problem with Paul is is that um, whoever put the canon together, I think you wrote in fossilized customs, all the books are out of order. They're supposed to go through the, you know, James and Peter and John first because that they they walked with him. It's the, the sort of the basic yeah. stuff, and then go to the harder issues later. And people are just hit with these complicated things first. Do you think that's a big reason they have a problem with Paul? Oh, exactly. Yeah, the book of Acts would probably be in most everyone's theology, everyone who studied theology, that would be a good starting point. Because uh, Luke was very, very careful when he was writing to Theophilus about the process of his writing and how things happen. And then you could put uh, the other books in different orders. So you're starting out right off the bat with uh, these uh, in a nebulous way. And your, um, you know, the book of Matthew or Matthew who is first, which uh, isn't so bad, but it, it explains the birth and the genealogy, and it connects well with the Tanakh, because it is, you know, explaining the whole history of the genealogy of Yahushua. That wouldn't be so uh, so horrible at all. You can even keep those first four in in order. Uh, Matthew, Yahu, and Mark, and Luke, and Yahukanan, and then you could start off with uh, with Acts, and then uh, put Shaul's letters or Paul's letters in the back, yeah. so that his complicated, refined explanation of things, you know, would be better absorbed. Because you know, if you put James in there early, then you are already aware that you are justified by faith and works. And then you wouldn't misunderstand what Paul said in Ephesians, yeah. chapter two. So if you have uh, Paul mis misunderstood, yeah. and he's talking about ceremonial instructions, which yeah. they call laws. Yeah. If he, if you blanketly say that the moral law is not able to, you know, justify you. Well, the justification is in the blood of the Messiah. But you know, if you walk without Torah. Then it's your by your actions you are denying him. Mm. So th this is all stuff that uh, you have to kind of put back together because the uh, replacement theology ideas and the yeah. dispensationalist ideas people have to look those words up. They they sound complicated, but look up dispensationalism and look up replacement theology, and and then you'll understand what the how the wool was pulled over people's eyes. Yeah. You know, but the book's order is one of the basic places to start with. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as teachers, we have to become uh, equipped well enough to know what Paul's talking about when he says the word law. He's not yeah. saying the word law, of course. He's referring to instructions that have to do with either ceremonial instructions that are over with, you know, which Hebrews explains that uh, the priesthood is the thing that, that, it, that was coming to an end. Yeah, the priesthood. and yet in the translation it says the law, and it's not even in the text in the in the Greek. We don't even have the word law. It's the it's the topic is the priesthood that's coming to an end, and that's that's yeah. how people are so confused when they read their translation and they're looking in there and they see the word law yeah. that's in, and they're going, wait a minute, uh, and then we come along and go, that word's not there. It's yeah. talking about the priesthood. The priesthood is what is coming to an end because we have a new priesthood. Yeah, the Mount that priesthood. Mm -hmm. See, the the ceremonial laws or instructions were very tedious, and they pointed to something, and that's why it's important to look at what they're pointing to, and that and that animal sacrifices are over, you know, yeah. and, and the blood of the Messiah is what we have to cover us with, as yeah. for our yeah. sins, yeah. and call upon His name. Mm -hmm. So do you think uh, Melchizedek, uh, back in Abraham's time, do you think that was Yahushua? Well, there are theories about that. We, uh, we really uh, can't concretely know, know for sure. However, 
he is called the priest of the Most High, Elohim, mm -hmm. and El Shaddai, and of course we're, uh, he, it doesn't say that he is El Shaddai, mm -hmm. but it does in some secular understandings, and, and, and theological circles too, uh, he was regarded to be a, uh, uh, he was actually uh, Shem. Now, uh, that's just a theory. Yeah. But the reason that it says in Hebrews, I believe it is, that he had no father or mother, and that related to the fact that his origins were uh, not of a father and mother, yeah. which would incline one to believe that he was a messenger or uh, he was Yahushua pre-incarnate. Yeah. And that's also possible. Uh, so we have to remain open and not uh, become dismissive of other people's opinions about that. But yeah. if you if you set your opinions in stone, then you've got uh, you know a little bit more or less. Well, you've got no flexibility at all. But yeah. that doesn't mean you have loose theology either. But if it was Shem, and he had no father or mother. That would just simply mean that he didn't have one that was alive. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. But. But if we were to say that it was Yahusha, then it would make a lot of sense because he was, you know, there was all these emblems, uh, you know, bread and wine. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, and I think uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. We've, we've been uh, reading that Messiah book. We're into the, the renewed covenant now, but back in the Old Testament, the... What's um, Thomas? Yeah, what's, yeah, what's Thomas? Thomas? Uh, I... I think he says that it's Yahushua. He's he's mapping all through the the uh, scriptures, the Old Testament. He's mapping right. the, the Aleph Tor. He's mapping it all through, yeah. Yeah. and so he does that in every every main, not every chapter, but it's every main area through the Old. He um he maps where the Aleph Tor is seen and how it's a direct reference to Yahushua. Um, it is. Yeah, and it's Aleph, the, yeah. yeah, it's been. It's been, a, it's been a while since uh, we talked about Melchizedek, but I'm pretty sure he said it was Yahushua. Yeah. yeah, and I lean that way as well. It's uh, the Aleph and the Ta are markers that indicate covenants and identities mm -hmm. of who the speaker is. And that's what makes it so exciting when you read Revelation 1, where he says, I am the Aleph and the Ta. I'm the one who was there. I was speaking to you back at Sinai, and I walked with Adam and Kalah, and all those mysterious Aleph and Taz, and what, for the audience, what we're talking about is the Hebrew letter Aleph, which is equivalent to our letter A, and Ta is the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it's just placed into the text in key places, yeah. and the rabbis over the years have never been able to really figure out what it's there for, yeah. but we know that it's the marker of the identity of the speaker, yeah. so that we know that it's the same being, you know. Wow. Yeah, it is an amazing thing. It's a secret. It's something that was one of those secrets. I don't even know if I mentioned that in the seminar on the secret. I may have. I don't know. Yeah. I've seen it for a while. Hmm. But I do mention it in some seminars, you know, the off Tom. And it's, ama it's amazing that he was just walking with them in the garden. And oh, it is. And living in a different, dim what you said last week, they were living in a higher dimension. Exactly. Open heavens. Well, they were certainly uh, clothed with his presence yeah. because yeah. He, he breathed his life into them. Yeah. And well, he breathed the life into one that's yeah. Adam, and that same life was there in his wife. Yeah. That it was just a separation of the two. And I don't know what they would, must have looked like, but they must have been absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, of course, my theory is that. They were born, uh, not born, but uh, created from the darkest, richest soil, and they appeared like beautiful black people. Yeah. And all the white people that we see today are just derivatives and derivatives, and they've lost the melanin. And we're really black people. We're all yeah. black, except we don't look. <laughs> and uh, that's what spawned all the races, yes. because you, you can't get darker, all you can get, lighter, you know. Yeah, yeah. Polar, yeah. polar bears are not going to ever get dark again. No, no. Uh, unless you in breed some of it, but they're never <coughs> rich, dark, black look. No. 
Well, while we've been talking about the uh, sensuality and everything, why? What do you think when Adam and Kua fell? Why do you think when it said get, they they took fig leaves and covered them? Why do you think um, they? I know they recognised and they obviously felt it when they fell, but why do you think they covered their parts? Why? Why do you? Th they didn't know what nakedness was. Why do you think they suddenly went? Okay, that's a rude bit. I'll cover it up. Why? Why? Because their sin wasn't a sexual sin, uh, was it? You know, to try to analyze the psychology of yeah. them is impossible, but <laughs> I, I would assume that it is yeah. somewhat yeah. shameful, the same shame that they that we would feel. Uh, like sometimes you'll have a dream, yeah. and in the dream you'll see color, you know, uh, where they spared no expense in the dream at all, and you have color. <laughs> You're going, wow, this must be a really expensive dream because you're seeing colors. And, yeah. and then uh, you realize, you look down, you realize you're not wearing any pants. <laughs> you know, you might be wearing a shirt, but you're going, what? <laughs> so, you know, you're in big crowds of people and, and yeah. you're going house to house and building to building and you're hoping no one notices. Yeah. Well, you know, fig leaves would be fantastic, but you can't find anything covered. <laughs> So those are the same sorts of things. It might be that that's an echo of Adam yeah. and Kool's shame that they felt. Yeah. You know, we have these dreams. Mm. But I imagine it's just that shamefulness that yeah. we we feel. Now, why it is, I don't know. I don't want to go any further than and get into psychoanalysis. But, uh, you know, yeah. I can say, well, how did you feel about your mother? Your <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Didn't have, I didn't have one. <laughs> yeah, my you know, it's really, really odd. My father was not, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. In fact, if you were Adam's son, you'd say, you know, my father was dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, though. Uh, have you, how many people in the audience have... <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Yahuwah Yahu says, yeah. he remembers, oh, man, that you were just dust. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he remembers what we are. So if we get free and out of shape, he remembers we're just yeah. us. We have to remember that too. Yeah. But uh, yeah. the thing of it is, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, Adam and Kawa, the first man and woman, were just dust, and yeah. they uh, will return to dust. Uh, yeah. and, you know, the spirit of Yahuwah in them was the only thing giving them life. And uh, yeah. so. You know, he breathed into their nostrils the breath of yeah. life. Yeah. So it's uh, in the Hebrew, the word nefesh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that nefesh has sustained yeah. itself all the way through in yeah. your children and my grandchildren. That same breath is still in there and it's wow. continuing on, you know. So we have to respect that breath of life. Mm -hmm. And when we, we talk about murder and, and injury to other people and war mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, those are the things that, uh, you know, and, and the image that we're made in as well. We, we are made in the image, and, f and perhaps that nefesh is the most important image. You know, we've yeah. talked about the image of the beast, and the image of Yahuwah is certainly including the nefesh. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the, uh, the fact is, uh, Adam was uh, dirt, and uh, his uh, children probably looked at him as didn't see that. They were blinded yeah. to the fact, hey, my dad's dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Hey, how many people, though, do you think pray for Adam and Kawa today? Ah, yeah. You know, you could do that. There's because you, Yahuwah is immortal, but he's also omnipresent in time, om omnipotent and omnipresent, omnitemporal. Yeah. So if you pray to him in the present, and he is existing in the past, you can pray for Adam and Kawa during their lifetimes. And that would, you know, be unusual. But oh, I pray, wow. pray for Abraham, I pray for Ishak, I pray for Yaakov and all their children, and I pray for, it's odd, but I pray for all the descendants of Adam and Kawa too, which includes everybody, you know. Mm. But, you know, why not? That's, I mean, think pretty big, you know. That's just a, a mind melt. <laughs> so, but, wow. um, That's I amazing. Think, I think it's because Yahuwah wants us to pray for yeah. one another. And yeah. would one another be including our forebears and 
yeah. including first parents. Because they're, they're still asleep, aren't they? Yes, yes. We're waiting the resurrection, just like we are, all will one day. It's, yeah. He doesn't take us while we're alive. Yeah. But, um, yeah, his return is going to be raising up a lot of people. Yeah. And we don't know, but Adam and Kawa might not be at the first resurrection. They might be in the second one. Yeah. You know, yeah. people don't know about that, do they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For the two resurrections, there's a there's a DVD yeah. called the two resurrections. So you think people that are in the, I I always thought that the people in the first resurrection, if if they made it, were alive. You think people that are actually have died might be in the in the first resurrection as well. I thought it was just you got transformed. I, I thought the raising up was the second one. Do you think dead people might be in the first resurrection as well? Well, sure. Well, they won't be dead when they're raised up, of course. No, yeah. that, that one seminar that I was saying that people are living in the cemeteries, they're dead people. Yeah. <laughs> well, they are, in a sense. Some of them are, are alive, yeah. but they're, they're unaware of what's going on in the uh, natural world that we live in. But, uh, yeah, the uh, first resurrection would include a remnant of those who were righteous and the, yeah. and they were actually the wise managers in the parable if you look up wise managers you'll see that they're going to be in the first resurrection and they're feeding the household you know the doctrines you know the truth and as they're teaching they're going to be found doing that when he returns yeah. but many people will have been doing that through these centuries and they're deceased but they'll be in the first resurrection because they will be what they uh, what did Paul call it he call it the higher calling, you know, and that higher calling is a reference to the first resurrection. And Paul didn't even know if he was going to be included in that. He was hoping to attain the higher calling, yeah. which is the first resurrection. And then, of course, a thousand years later, when uh, you know that would be the second resurrection. Uh, many teachers teach that the great white throne judgment is going to be. Uh, the demise of everyone in in that judgment seat, but that's not true because you see you have all the people who didn't make the first resurrection, but yeah. they will make the second resurrection in the great white throne. And if their names are in the scroll of life, that's the determining factor. Yeah. Then they will enter into eternal life. Uh, the uh, interesting thing, though, is during the millennium, there's going to be flesh and uh, you know people born and. We be there to teach them, or certainly if we if if we are so arrogant to believe that we will be in the first resurrection, if yeah. we are included in that, yeah. then we would be by his sovereignty allowed to teach them. And many people during that thousand years would be enabled to learn enough of the truth because see they'll be living in the real days of awe because they'll know they're between the two resurrections and that thousand years everyone that's born will either accept or reject the truth and many of those will be in the second resurrection as well so you see when the teachers teach people that everybody in the great white throne judgment are going to be thrown into the lake of fire yeah. they're in error but yeah. i'm not condemning them i'm just saying their teachings are a little bit off yeah you know so at the beginning of that millennial uh reign um the earth has been Restored, hasn't it? Yes, it's going to be restored to a, a brand new starting point because there's going to be a lot of burning going on. All the works of the flesh are going to be burned up, yeah. and uh, the beast and the false prophet are going to be the first to go into the lake of fire. So when false teachers tell you, "Oh, uh, he's certainly burning in hell." Well, that's not true, because yeah. nobody is in the, in the lake of fire right now, yeah. you see, because it says the first to go in, it says this, mm. are the beast and the false prophet. Yeah. Now, the dragon and his messengers and followers go in at the end of the thousand years, you know, okay. that's pretty clear. I mean, this isn't something we're just making up. These are, these are not our opinions. These are facts that come from Scripture. Yeah. So, we can't just learn from sound bites that the society tells us, you know. We have to do have more research than that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, not that we're any better for knowing it, it's just that we need to make sure we don't propagate error, yeah. you know. Yeah. As much as we can. Yeah. 
And the new Yerushalayim has come down as well at the beginning of the millennial, hasn't it? Well, I like to believe that it's coming uh, as the bride. It's the, it's the it is called the bride, adorned for her. the new Yerushalayim, and it's made up of living stones, which apparently would be ourselves. And if we're going to have the wedding supper of the Lamb at the beginning of the millennium, then it would seem that we'd be it would be the new Yerushalayim. The bride would be there. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So if the bride isn't there, and the <laughs> new Yerushalayim. Kind of already. Already. So, you know, uh, but there are those that believe that the, that the New Jerusalem comes down at the end of the millennium, which is uh, a little bit of a stretch. But yeah. I'm not going to say you know one way or the other uh, is correct. But I'm just saying what I'm going to teach is more likely. I'll, I'll teach both things are possible. But I'm yeah. going to say that it's probably necessary for the bride to be at the wedding supper. Yeah. And the bride is referred to as the New Jerusalem. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we, bring, you know. Yeah, of course. Kind of a wedding without a bride. It's just a bummer, you know. <laughs> yeah. So human life, do you think human life will continue to go uh, on like the average lifespan that it is in that millennial reign or um, if there's going to well, be still flesh and flesh and blood and, and uh, people being born and dying then well, there's a text that says that the uh, person that dies at 100 years old will be considered to be an infant. So there may be a lengthening of lifespans again. Because, you know, we do have really brief lifespans. Uh, yeah. I'm 61 right now, so in eight years and some odd months, I'll be 70 years old. Yeah. And uh, at that point, uh, you know, I may or may not be blessed to go further, but uh, I may not get that far. You know, I may, yeah. what he's done with my work, and yeah. uh, he's going to cast me aside and I'll be uh, moved into, you know, a place of uh, waiting, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, what, what was it we were talking about? <laughs> I was, I, Life when you take a death, you kind of, your brain kind of reboots. <laughs> uh, Don't be upset, man. You're not going to die okay. yet. <laughs> it's uh, we're talking about lifespans. Lifespans, yeah. yeah it, it seems like they're going to be extended. I would think, yeah. Just to yeah. look at the text, you know, mm. look at, if we were to do a topic study of that, mm. I would say that the likelihood of that happening is great. We're probably not going to live uh, these short little lifespans that we no. do now. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be us. It'll be new people. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Your children's 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 children's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just heard. I, I just heard a bird. Oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a uh, seagull, and yeah. uh, I'm not anywhere near the sea. But yeah. you see, what it is is well, Phyllis and I have these. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the background on your computer. Yeah. You know, little. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, the little feature. And uh, my feature is a seascape with lighthouses, and hers is just seascapes. Yeah. And both of her computers will, when they get an email in or something, will a little seagull will scream and go, it's mine, or something. <laughs> and talk. Yeah. yeah, the seagull sounds are coming from that. That's oh, her okay. computer. So you don't have the bird on your shoulder anymore? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, that bird is now in Indiana, which is a state that's just north of us. Yeah. And uh, I think about Ufi a lot. Yeah. She was a sweet little soul. Yeah. And she, uh, she'd get down in your shirt and just go up and crawl down into your shirt and yeah. then sit there and then turn around and her claws would be on the inside of your shirt and her head would be poking out. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and just to keep warm, especially yeah. in the winter, because it, it would be cold and she'd, you know, cuddle with you. Wow. That's oh, wonderful. it's been about an hour, Mark. I'm going to have to get. <laughs> yeah, get... it's wonderful, mate. Yeah, we've covered yeah. lots of topics. I'm very happy yeah. with that. Yeah, great. That's amazing. And uh, where where are we today, brother? Well, let's see. Uh, I hadn't given that any thought. Have you yeah. considered that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I had some. Uh, I didn't know how we were going to, I thought if this was going to, if young people were going to watch this, I had all this graffiti behind us. <laughs> we're in a ghetto. <laughs> oh, you 
you don't want to use ugly things, you know. No. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, really know uh, where we would want to be. Let's say, uh, I think a, a lake or maybe a canoe. Um, ah. Lakes, canoes. Uh, you know, because Israel is a sea empire. Of and course. we're yeah. we're out there as a, you know, if you had, uh, of course, I'm used to, I, I, Phyllis and I love marine biology and all that sort of thing, and yeah. of course we're fear, fearful somewhat of, this, of the ocean, but yeah. we love the ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't want to live near the ocean unless it was a very, very high place. And, yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, the, the uh, cliffs of uh, Dover, and mm -hmm. uh, those are beautiful places. I can see why Israel and the, the children of Israel and the tribes migrated around the, the oceans of the world, because, yeah. you know, a, they were a sea empire, mm -hmm. and uh, that was to migrate. You know, so that we would be, be, so that we would become the nations. Yeah. 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 So. Wow. So you wouldn't live near the ocean unless it was high up. Uh probably. Yeah. If I was to be, yeah, because I was, I was at one time years ago considering, uh, before I was wanting to move to Australia, and I still do. Yeah. I want to move to Australia, uh, but uh, because I'm, I'm fearful of somewhat of uh, the nor northern hemisphere. It's. Uh, Overly populated. There's a lot of dangerous things up here. Nuclear power plants of every sort. But uh, also, uh, I had thought about becoming a, going to Virginia Beach, uh, maybe in Virginia, a beautiful state. However, the sea level is very low, like Florida. It's very low, and the ocean could just suddenly, uh, over a period of a decade, could easily come up and engulf a lot of area. Yeah. You know so. You know, but you just have to move, you know, but uh, I don't like to move a lot. No. I don't like to move hardly at all, but, you know, if you whoever wants me to move, I'll move, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful, mate. Well, uh, yeah. I guess we can think of something. You know, if, you, if you can get any uh, backgrounds of lakes yeah. or yeah. boats. Boats? Yeah. Or nice, boats. Yeah, do you have a boat? Yeah, we were doing that. Already, somewhat in the, you know, Venice. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. But uh, that was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, enjoyed that one. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Well, well, that's wonderful, brother. Well, you better get uh, something to eat, eh? Or did you get? <laughs> did you have something to eat? I get to eat before the interviews now because oh, we okay. start a bit later. Yeah, I had uh, I had eggs uh, and uh, turkey. Yeah. Turkey sausage, actually, it's not pigs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and toast this morning, and, yeah. and coffee, and of yeah. course, here's my trusty uh, radio mug, radio. See, with those uh, serious lightning bolts coming out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vacuum and, uh, packed. Can you, can you can see that okay? Yeah, vacuum packed. Oh, wow, you can read the little print. Very nice. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's an old trusty mug. Yeah. Well, uh, fantastic. We love you guys. Yeah, I love you too, mate. Pray for you many times a day. Yeah, thank you. Well, That's amazing. Thank you for your help today. It's been amazing. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of brothers and sisters. I hope so. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see you the next week. Yeah, thank you, brothers and sisters, for this episode of Torah Talk. Uh, we love you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. See you later, see you. mate. Bye bye. Love you. Bye bye. Torah Talk.